When a trade is lopsided, we can sit back in our lounge chairs and analyze to our heart's content. We've recently gone over the Herschel Walker trade, but the bonanza it became for Dallas, and the obvious grave mistake it was for the Vikings. However, not all seismic trades are so cut and dry. What happens when a big move is made and no team benefits from it? There are plenty of moves where this happens, but one as high profile as the Ricky Williams trade? That's a gross overpayment that may never be topped. But before this trade is analyzed, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video. Aura. If you look hard enough, you can find anything about anyone on the internet. Full names, home addresses, phone numbers, relatives, you name it. You can do every single thing right and it will still be right for the taking. You know why that is? Data brokers. They sell your information to robocallers, spammers, telemarketers, anyone they can get their hands on. With how many spam calls, messages, and emails I've gotten as of late, one wrong move and I'm screwed. But this is where Aura comes in to help. They identify data brokers that have your information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. This even goes for junk mail and telemarketing lists. This list of mine is based on about a year of requests from Aura. Look how far it keeps going. That's how bad it can get for anyone. You don't even have to assume. Take a look for yourself by trying Aura for two weeks free. Just go to Aura.com slash Utree or scan the QR code in the video to get started. Aura isn't only for internet protection and security, but a jack of all trades. An all-in-one app to help you secure your precious information anywhere you go on the web. Now on to the video. The New Orleans Saints weren't exactly a team of great fortune in the mid-90s. Their best legacy in the NFL to that point had been resounding failure. Paper bags aren't going to be enough to cover the horrible blemish that had been football in the bayou. Endless mistakes on and off the field. Talented offensive weapons drafted and subsequently destroyed. Veteran players paid shitloads to be terrible five years past their prime. Big name head coaches slowly rotting past expiration date and a whole lot of losing. Try 20 consecutive seasons of ineptitude. And the four times they somehow made it to the big dance, they pissed themselves and lose in humiliating fashion. A window of slight competence had fallen to nothing by 1996. Jim Mora, the best coach the team ever had to that point, resigned in a barrage of fuck yous and diddly poos. An anemic offense, a porous defense, a completely lost identity. The Dome Patrol had been outsourced to other cities. Saints owner Tom Benson needed to do something big. The fleur-de-lis was decaying into blight. And their next coach had to be someone with moxie and gusto. Turn on the TV and there he is. Mike Dicka. The coach to lead the future. He'd been out of football for half a decade, he did little without Buddy Ryan, and that 1985 Bears team was so loaded that a child could have won with them, but legends like him don't grow on trees. His cigar-smoking, player-chewing, boisterous personality would take the bayou from the doldrums of despair to even bolder doldrums of despair. 1997 and 1998 were so awful for the Saints that fans went to their emergency shelters and longed for Dick Nolan again. Iron Mike's CEO-like approach led them into an alligator-infested swamp. Some of the worst offenses that the Saints ever had the privilege of suffering through. Wideouts that couldn't separate, running backs that ran into walls repeatedly, and a quarterback carousel of death. Trading for a long-busted pre-Congress Heath Schuler, Trying to make Danny Werfel into an NFL-caliber option. A brief spell for Carolina's prodigal son and Kerry Collins. And a monopoly on the Billy Joe market. Two straight 6-10 seasons. Dicka was looking well past his expiration date as a coach. Threatened to quit the team during his first year was so bad. Iron Mike would commit to coaching again. Come the time of the 1999 draft, he had an epiphany. One word came to him in a winter's dream, whispering serenades of joy and glories untold. Sweetness. The man that made that 85 Bears offense hum. Walter Payton. New Orleans had a decent defense in a developing offensive line, but lacked running prowess. And Dicka swore to do everything he could to find such a man for his team. Fortunately for him, there was a potentially generational talent available for the taking this year. Hailing from the University of Texas, a longhorn that could carry an offense like Sweetness himself did. That man's name? Ricky Williams. Finesse, top speed, elusiveness, and power. He was the total package. A unanimous Heisman Trophy winner the then NCAA Division I-A record holder for rushing yards. An absolutely eccentric introvert who had a fear of crowds. He was a quirky fellow, but Dicka felt that was more to love. There was only one issue. The Saints were picking 12th. He was gonna be off the board long beforehand. But that mattered none whatsoever. 
as Ricky was his Twitch streamer, Mike would simp over his lust whenever he could. This included the NFL owners meetings, where he boasted that he would trade his entire draft to select Williams. Nothing was off the table for his prize. And that's the sound of your GM's leverage being completely destroyed. To be fair, New Orleans tried the same stunt the previous draft. They tried trading everything to the Colts and Chargers for a chance at Peyton Manning or Ryan Leaf, but were rebuffed. So what about the 1999 draft? It was very quarterback heavy, so Ricky wasn't going to be the first overall pick. Cleveland was gunning for a QB, and they chose to ruin Tim Couch as the first of many failures of their rebirth. Philadelphia number two? The fans wanted Williams, but they had Deuce Staley who performed well. Quarterback was also a need, and they took Donovan McNabb beginning a very hateful relationship between the city and their Syracuse ally. This is where desperation comes for the Saints. Cincinnati was picking third, and Ricky was projected to go around this spot. Mike Dicka was screaming in GM Bill Kaharich's ear to make a move. What's the saying? Make an offer they can't refuse? That's pretty much what they did. Offering the Saints' entire draft in 1999. Their first round picks in each of the next two seasons. A second round pick on top of all that! to move up nine positions. The only thing more insane than that proposal was that the Bengals rejected it. Surely a team as well-run and reputable as Cincy wouldn't bungle their selection, you say? Their pick was Achilles Smith, one of the biggest busts in the history of the NFL draft. This is why that city can't have nice things. So with Cincy choosing death, they had to wait for Indianapolis. They already had a quarterback in tow, a certain guy named Peyton Manning. Not to mention Marshall Falk was due to get paid and the Colts might not want to pony up. All serenades of throwing picks at them were rejected from the get-go. Running back was on their mind, and all Dicka could do was gnash his teeth. With the uh, fourth choice in this draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Edgerin James, running back, University of Miami. Wait a minute, Edgerin James? They picked him over quite possibly the best running back prospect in years? What morons! There's still a chance for the shotgun wedding to take place after all. The only thing standing in their way were the Washington Redskins. Thanks to a shrewd trade of Sean Gilbert to Carolina, they got the Panthers' first pick at number five. They love Champ Bailey, but unlike Cincy, they refuse to say no to the smorgasbord being offered. There has been a trade involving this uh, fifth pick in the draft. The New Orleans Saints are now on the clock. The trade had become official. The Saints brass celebrated like they had just won the Super Bowl. All of the burdens of a team placed on one man's shoulders for New Orleans' entire 1999 draft. And first and third round selections in 2000. With the uh, fifth pick in the draft, the New Orleans Saints select Ricky Williams, running back, University of Texas. The Saints felt they gave up a good bit less than expected. They kept their 2001 first rounder, at least. With their draft capital spent, Mike Dicka had only one thing on his mind as he lit up a victory cigar. Gone golfing. He would wish that he had stayed on that golf course for the rest of 1999. Despite finding the supposed piece that would take the Saints to greater places, the only destination was at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Mike Ditka transformed into a mockery of himself faster than he put on dreads during Ricky's initial press conference. Then they got married in an ESPN photo shoot. Only if Ditka wasn't the one wearing the dress, though. Till death do us part. It would happen on the football field. In their quest for Ricky Williams, they forgot to find a suitable quarterback for the team. The dueling Billy Joe show marched the Saints to the brink of despair. And then the team defense fell apart. The hits would keep on coming. Just like suffering the first loss to the Buccaneers in 1977, Ditka had to deal with the humiliation of being the first to lose to the resurrected Browns. On a Hail Mary pass, Iron Mike was rusting and buckling under the pressure. A shell of his former self in nearly all facets. They tried to throw everything on the shoulders of Williams, but he was visibly injured and ineffective. Not to mention missing team buses, doing interviews in his helmet, and being flat out miserable in this organization. 3 and 13 was their reward for going all in. And don't forget the Redskins have their first and third round picks. It was time to gut this festering carcass starting at the head. Pretty much everyone got fired. Ditka, Kaharich, the coaching staff, everyone. It's to no one's surprise that the trade set the Saints back years. Yet even then, they not only had a winning record and made the playoffs the next year, they won their first playoff game in team history. But that was unfortunately a blip on the radar. It was in spite of the Iron Mike era and that horrible trade. And the worst part of it all was that it wasn't Ricky's fault. Was it he that prevented Mike Dicka from shutting the fuck up? 
problem with Williams was obvious from the start. New Orleans traded way too much. Even when looking at it from Jimmy Johnson's famous draft pick value chart, trading the entire 1999 draft would have been surprisingly fair value. But by adding the 2000 picks and what they ended up becoming, the Saints overpaid by at least three times that selection's worth. And that offer they made to Cincinnati would have been even worse. The expectations placed on Williams were ridiculous. And even as he put up respectable numbers in his three years in the Bayou, it wasn't anywhere close to what they thought he would be. And by the time 2001 came around, the writing was on the wall for him here. But he never fit in with the team, and the Saints had just drafted Deuce McAllister. So in the next offseason, he was shipped off to Miami for what would be two first-round picks. As a Dolphin in 2002, he would finally realize the sky-high potential that made Dick a salivate. And it would be a fruitful endeavor indeed. In between going to India to smoke pot. As for the picks given to Washington, you may notice that a lot of these selections weren't made by Washington, but Chicago. Remember that the Redskins loved Jam Bailey. They traded up with Chicago at 7, adding the picks given by the Saints Bonanza to select him. Chicago drafted a bunch of flops and traded several of the picks to Denver to move up as well. The Broncos at least got Desmond Clark and Billy Miller out of it, who were decent players in the NFL. Washington? They got Bailey, John Jansen, and LeVar Arrington out of it. Excellent players, but it didn't do much for their fortunes. You see, in May of 1999, they were cursed with a cancer known as Dan Snyder. He fired Charlie Casterly, the man behind the trade, just before training camp. Let that set the scene. Constant meddling and terrible forays into free agency turned them into a laughing stock. And the rest can be seen to this day. As a result, nobody truly benefited from this trade of trades. New Orleans was in the abyss, only reviving in the mid-2000s in spite of this deal. And Washington dealt with damn good culture. Even then, decades after the fact and the results well known, Mike Ditka would still do that trade and then some in a heartbeat. Gotta love a man with conviction. Sometimes there are just no happy endings. The Redskins would know a thing or two about that later on down the line, wouldn't they? 11 yards shy of the record. Williams breaks a hole. Williams, hello record book! Ricky Williams runs to the Hall of Fame, cuts back. Ricky Williams, touchdown! 60 yards and the record is his. He does it in dramatic fashion.